Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome again to sunny Retford. Okay, beautiful and sunny out there. Beautiful, clear, sparkly day. Um, just doing a quick intro here. I'm going to talk you through today removing the engine and transmission uh, on block from a Mark II Triumph Stag, um, the three litre standard Triumph engine. I'll talk you through a little bit about the car, why it's here, what's happened to it, and what's going to happen to it, and hopefully you can follow along and I'll do a little vlog on the build as it goes along. Um, as you can see, it's British Racing Green currently. Um, it was yellow. It's been sprayed British Racing Green. Um, the paint job originally wasn't bad. Uh, unfortunately, when it came back to reassembling, the um, painter, not only did he lose most of the bits, uh, including the headlights, the bumpers, the grills, um, he also um, he didn't know how to do it. Uh, he took it to bits, but couldn't put it back together again. Uh, it sat for a number of years, in, uh, in first in a workshop and then outside in a yard. So the paint has actually bared fairly well. Um, however, when I went to pick it up, unfortunately somebody had taped the boot lid shut and the bonnet shut and when masking tape gets wet, it literally sticks like poo to a blanket. You can't get it off. So it's covered in masking tape, this needs sanding down and repairing. And also some of the guys in the yard uh, at the gentleman's business had been moving it around with a forklift. Um, and as you can see, they've damaged the doors and the rear wing and the rear wheel arch. Not on purpose, but unfortunately if you move stuff around with a forklift, it's kind of inevitable that's going to happen. So the plan is, was originally to recommission it, put it back together, get it running, um, get the paint repaired and then continue on. So my suggestion was uh, start with the engine. That's obviously the biggest expense with a car like this. The bodywork's done. So it, it doesn't need a huge amount of work on the bodywork that I can see as yet. This is the first time up on the ramp. Um, however, having had a quick look at the engine, it, it's not looking too chipper in there. And also the customer's mentioned that he might like a color change. Um, and having discussed it with him, he's considering a change to white. So I've suggested that we take the engine out, do a deep dive into it because I've seen down in here, you won't be able to see on the camera. However, if you could see in there, the tensioners for the timing chains are very, very far out. So they desperately need replacing. It's been sat outside for around 12 months. And unfortunately, the carbs, as you can see, were attached. So rainwater, rats, and lots of other things have been living down in the parts. And the bars, there's loads of rat feces down there. Um, and although under there looks quite clean, I suggested it's well worth a look. It is not seized, but there is a huge financial amount of parts missing. For example, front pulley, alternator, starter motor, near side um, exhaust manifold. Uh, the distributor cap is broken. There's no pipes, there's no wiring. So I said, if he wants the engine bay painting, the first step would be to pull the engine out have a look at the engine. If it needs rebuilding, do it. If it doesn't, if it's fine, change the time chains and so on. Although I think quite honestly for the extra expense, it's worth doing. Uh, that's just my personal advice. Um, but obviously if I look in there and it's all been freshly done, I won't do it. I'll just change the time and chains. Uh, and the engine bay is actually in quite good condition. Although it's dusty, it is pretty much stripped. Uh, the metalwork is good. So it would be beneficial to get the engine out and spray it, try and stag white in there, um, and then check the and build the engine and replace it. Probably needs a new clutch, but now is the time to do it when it's nice and easy. Um, there's no real sense in getting it running first. So that's what I'm gonna to do today and you can watch me do it. Okay, I'll put you on the tripod and you can see the actions I'm going through. I'll put the car on the ramp first, off we go. So yeah, I figured it was worth showing you under here. Um, it's pretty interesting. I wasn't going to actually do it, but um, there's so much going on that it's worth seeing. So as you can see, it's lucky that I decided to drain the oil. The oil come out of it is jet black, um, which is never a good sign, but I will say the bonus is we haven't got to any water. Oil floats on water, of course. So although it's like the fire back, it, um, it isn't full of water. The drain plug, which is some sort of weird double-nutted affair, 
it's showing a few, it's obviously magnetic and it's showing a few issues there. Um, that's never a good sign. We'll see what it's like inside it. I've got to say, it doesn't look like it's ever been rebuilt under here. Um, I've removed the piece of threaded bar here in my collection of Rover V8 bell housings. Um, looks like M12. It doesn't belong in a stag. Uh, somebody would use that to hold the exhaust up. Interesting. So the next stage really is to remove the prop shaft here, which is what you'll see me doing. Okay. Um, it's a manual prop, which means it has a flange on each end with a set of 9 16 UNF bolts through it, high, super high tensile. Always keep those with the prop because they're the correct ones. So unless they're damaged, they're always good to go back in, uh, cleaned obviously. Then I'll be removing the gearbox cross member here. Okay, there are four bolts that are welded to a plate inside the cabin, or should be. Now, this one's got a nut here, nothing here, uh, a nut here, and nothing here. Um, so that's good. So you've got two on there to take out. And the last thing you remove are the engine mount bolts that you can see here. Perhaps just fallen off the engine. Uh, the volley's not all in there. Those are a living nightmare to get to at the back, but these ones shouldn't be too bad because all the manifolds and starter motor, etc. are missing. So they'll be the last thing to come out. I'll whip the nuts off those, but leave them in situ to hold the engine in place. The engine I will let rest back gently against, um, against its own weight. It won't damage the bulkhead if you come down slowly with the uh, transmission jack. Obviously, if you haven't got a transmission jack and a ramp, you just use a, uh, sorry, a trolley jack and allow that to come down. You don't need to remove the cross member. This is a manual car. If it was an automatic car, you would need to drop the cross member to help you get the sump and the transmission out past it. Um, I've done it without, but it's very difficult. And you've got to be very careful when you're removing any engine from a stag not to damage those pipes on the power steering rack. Okay, so I'll get on with it. That's the transmission down, okay? Resting very gently against the bulkhead now. I need to be careful because obviously I'm gonna have to paint that and I don't want to damage it at all because it is in good condition. Um, it will just settle there gently. If you just come down really slowly, it won't do any damage. Uh, the transmission mounts are shot. Uh, luckily, the bolts were still connected to the captives inside. Often these have just been replaced by um, 3 8 UNF bolts and washers, so when you try to run them out, they, they just spin around, but these didn't, which is a bonus. Um, obviously, the mounts are totally sharp, but that's fine. The electrics weren't connected up. 
the exhaust is just dangling about. Um, the gear stick was already removed. Okay, I'd done that previously. It's very easy. It's only two seven sixteenths head quarter UNF uh, screws in there. I've returned the oil drain plug so it doesn't make a mess. And now what I'm gonna do, using my trusty 916 ring spanner, ta-da, 916 I'm going to put that on the front here, thus. Uh, and luckily, because the starter motor is uh, missing from this side, I should be able to get my little ugga dugga gun in there and run those off at the rear. These ones, not so much. You might see me struggling a little bit there, but luckily it'll be fast forwarded with music over the top, so you won't hear me swearing at it. Okay, I'll do that now. So the near side engine mount bolts are out, they both ran out and it's just sat there. You can see that the engine mounting here is sat on there. Um, that's the other nut falling down here as it fell out. Now these ones look really, really easy actually to get out and you can get to the front of them there. They are nylocks, so therefore they don't come off very easily. Luckily the bottom one is short. Um, now if you are contemplating taking your own stag engine out, <laughs> the rear of those mounts uh, up there somewhere. Getting a spanner on them is near impossible. Um, I have a custom modification for those before they go back in, which I will be carrying out on this car. As you can see, everything on the stag happens on the offside. So you've got the oil pump there at the back. Here, you've got the oil filter housing, which obviously I can remove, but then you've all the power steering pipes in the way, which come out of the rack, and you've got the clutch. Uh, slave cylinder also which makes it very 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 difficult at this side now if someone has welded a bar which is my custom mod um, behind those two bolts then that'll be very easy I'll put my little gun on and we're going to go run straight off uh, if not then it's going to be a long drawn out painful and uh, pretty vile operation <laughs> we'll have to wait and see it may involve taking the power steering pipes off um, we'll see if I can get a spanner in there I've got some shorties okay so I'll put you back on the stand. Yep, wiggly wobbly camera, sorry about that, I'm holding it again. But if you look there, down, both of those nuts are off. This one's sat here. Um, I'll show you a picture of those from the rear. This shows you how difficult it is to get in there once the engine is out. Um, how difficult it is to get a spanner in there. The other ones are off. So now all I need to do is lower the car down off the ramp and set it up to remove the engine. Um, it's come out incredibly easily. I will say if you're removing your own stag engine, um, obviously the rad is out, the front pulley is off, you do need to remove the front pulley and the fan, that saved an awful lot of time. Um, the starter motor is missing, um, it will be on there before it goes back in, so it's easy to put it on off the car. That makes it a lot easier and the exhaust manifold is also missing from this side. Um, bad for the customer because he has to buy them, but um, for me to take it out, that makes life significantly easier. The power steering pump is also missing on the alternator, which also makes it significantly easier. Um, the car itself, up underneath, obviously I've only ever seen the top of it. You can see the damage on the exhaust manifolds from lifting it up with a forklift. They are crushed flat. Uh, I don't really think it matters. The underside of the, of the exhaust is absolutely rotten off, as you can see. There's also a few minor issues with the boot floor. 
so I'll give that a clean up at some point. It's obviously had one done previously, hence that bracket is bolted in. It should not be. Um, and also there's a, a, a slight hole here uh, and here and here. So the boot floor definitely needs some work. It looks like the real heel boards need some work. I'll clean those off before I committed myself to saying they need welding up. It doesn't look good, but it could just be peeling paint. Um, generally it leads to something worse, but we'll wait and see. The rest of it, although it's not beautiful in here, that patch, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> best described as would have been better not to bother. Um, and some of the other parts of the inner sill definitely need work before it goes off for paint. Um, the chassis rails don't look too bad. The floors don't look absolutely terrible. Um, but again, once I start cleaning, the inner sills are obviously crucial on a stag. It's where all the strength comes from because, you know, the roof is removable. There is no solid roof. And even with the T-bar, it doesn't add an awful lot of strength. So, yeah, uh, there's going to be some welding under here. Um, but, of course, I'll inform my customer about that later. The won't prevent the engine bay being painted or getting ready. Um, unless I need to end up cutting into places like this. So I will have a dive into those before I go any further with the paintwork. Thank you. So next step, uh, obviously I need to remove the bonnet um, so I can get in there to tie up the engine and lift it out. Obviously it's a front hinging bonnet so you wouldn't be able to get that out either way. There are six 716 quarter UNF screws in there. The rod here stays in. Um, somebody's just bobbed a bolt through there. Um, it may have actually been me because that looks painted. Um, usually there's a pin there with a split pin, which is worth removing the split pin before you start. Obviously you need to keep the bonnet elevated. You'll notice I've relocated the rear arms now. So just the rear of the car is going to come up when I remove the engine. That allows you to um, let the gearbox swing down and gives you a little bit more um, room to get the engine and gearbox out. If you have a pit, you don't need this, you don't have to do this, but it does make life significantly easier. Obviously you could do that with the jack and axle stands, but obviously I have a ramp and therefore I'm going to use it. Um, the interior of the car is disconnected. You would normally have to remove the gear stick as I mentioned earlier, and on that there are two wires for the overdrive, um, and there would probably be two wires, well there should be two wires coming up for the, um, for the uh, reversing light switch. Uh, you definitely need to remove the overdrive switch. I can't actually remember about the reversing light switch. I think that might be on the block connector that goes to the engine. So I'll have a look at that before it comes out. I don't think there's any wiring on the engine anyway. But that's already removed. It is actually sat in place, but it's not uh, attached to the gearbox at all. Um, so yeah, that's the next step. I'll whip the bonnet off and then I'll get the straps on for the engine removal. <laughs> see I've got the bonnet removed. These are captive plates so they're drilled and tapped uh, quad UNF. All that out. I've taken the bonnet over here. Sorry for the wiggly wobbly camera work. Now then I've just placed that on some cardboard blocks there. Obviously you have to have these ready first because a stag bonnet is really large and really heavy. Okay a lot easier with two people but I don't have two people today so there's just me. Um, now the stag bonnet is going off for paint, so I haven't put anything behind it because it's going to have to be stripped and painted anyway. Um, you'll notice there's things like these dints here that were in it when it came here. Um, so these are going to have to be done anyway, so there's no real point uh, worrying about it too much. If this was a car that was painted and I was taking the engine out, rebuilding it and putting it back in, um, and it wasn't being had work doing on it like a colour change, then obviously I'd have a, a blanket on the floor there and a blanket thrown over the top so it wouldn't touch the wall. 
Now then, if you're doing this on a stag, you see I've gone under the engine mount in there. Obviously, if the manifold is on, add a tide to that. But this side, I have gone around the manifold, okay? There's no lifting eyes on this side of the engine. Well, there is there. Um, but that's designed for if you're putting the engine in square without the gearbox. So I need the back end of the box to fall down. It's way down. So I can then pull the engine up. It will mean me handballing and uh, physically manhandling the gearbox out once it gets high enough. However, it's no big deal. I've done that before lots and lots of times. It's a packing strap. It's tied off here and wrapped around to stop it running through the hook. Double knotted. I usually use chains, but my chain's still attached to one of the other engines I've removed in the, in the workshop, so um, don't know where that is. So I'm using that uh, lorry strap that I bought there. You'll notice I've thrown a rag here over the front of the car. Now, again, it's getting painted, so if it gets scratched, it's not really the end of the world. Um, however, I'd rather not damage any of that, and sometimes the engine crane can have a habit when you take the load of it pulling forwards, uh, sorry, well, forwards on itself, towards the front of the car, which therefore could damage or scratch the paint. And again, if you're doing this on a car that was already painted, you're just removing the engine to rebuild it or whatever, um, then obviously you wouldn't want to damage or scratch that. So that's just a little bit of fail safe. Could use a piece of card, could use anything you like really. Um, right, I'll set you back up on the tripod and I will start and crane her out. Thanks a lot. So there we go, engine is out, uh, transmission is still attached, as we can see. Uh, you will notice, well you won't notice because I did it off camera, that I had to stop um, and change the strap position. It was just laying back a little too far as the engine, so I had to just move that back a little bit. So I used the lifting eye at the back here, a little bit sketchy because whoever used it last time didn't put any bolts back in, or they put one bolt back in. Um, it was also quite difficult because the transmission cross member was flapping about. Um, however, the engine is now out. As you can see, damage is minimal. Okay, there's a couple of little scratches there. Um, unfortunately, I had to rest the engine back against the bulkhead there when I was taking it out. As Again, if this had been a painted car and I was doing it, the, you know, the engine bay wasn't about to be repainted then I would have put some uh, wooden blocks down there or some carpet or some card or something like that. But the engine is out. You can see I've elevated the car quite a lot. I'll take a step back to help get the engine out. Obviously it works as a fulcrum around the front wheels so the front end of the car lowers. You'll see that come back up as I drop the car back down. So the front of the car actually elevates quite significantly. That gives you extra space. Uh, it gives the space for the gearbox to go up, gives space for the engine to go up and gain altitude. It doesn't do any harm whatsoever. Um, it's not the distinctive method. I'm not saying this is the only way, way you can do it. However, it does help significantly if you can. The suspension also rides up as you take the engine out. The engine is heavy. It's cast iron with aluminium heads. Uh, there's a lot of gubbins in there, although this one's missing a lot of that. Um, so yeah, the engine is out. I did have to stop when I relocated the straps and push my car back in because it started to rain here in overcast Retford. Um, but the engine is out, so the next video will be me splitting down the engine from the transmission, uh, and then I'll either continue on and strip the engine down, and you can do watch the full engine strip and rebuild uh, as it goes on. I'm doing this now purely because when I take that in to be machined, if I take it in to be machined, I'm guessing I will, having looked at the oil that came out, that uh, that will take a matter of weeks. It's not a 
next day turnaround or anything like that. It takes at least sort of six to eight weeks to get that done. So I can then be getting on with other tasks while that's in the, uh, in the workshop. Okay, so I'll stop there. Thanks for watching. Hope that's of some help. If you have any questions whatsoever uh, regards taking an engine out of a stag or any other vehicle for that matter, please by all means comment. I don't mind helping anyone at all. Um, if you want me to do this job for you, uh, by all means get in touch, Yorkshire Classic Cars Limited, um, on Facebook or on Insta. Um, and yeah, so I'll continue on with that. Please subscribe, it helps me out. Okay, and you get to see these updates without having to keep looking for them, because mine don't come up yet. I am not exactly Cletus McFarlane. Okay, so thanks for watching. Cheers. Goodbye.